know what it is. We in the building once again. Ten toes down. Shaft is in the building. And we want to just get to the mind, man, of what's going on. Let's get into the mind of, of our brother Shaft. Uh, you know, first of all, I want to uh, um, introduce you. How you doing, brother? What you been up to? I'm good. Just chilling. You know, hard work, dedication. Yeah, talk about it. Um, I seen you out there on the road. You was um running around yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I seen definitely. you um on your um ten toes down. You was live. You was recording some of the footage of DMX, brother. How was that yesterday? That was that's monumental. That's monumental because you know a lot of people may view DMX as a drug addict or he didn't do anything for his community and stuff like that. D DMX have touched many people. He touched like the whole society when you think about it. Not only with his music, but with his prayer. Um, his send off was 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 beautiful. His family was there. His kids spoke. You know, it was a beautiful it was a beautiful moment. And you seen the love, all the people that came out. Cause you got people that say they didn't care a thing about DMX. And okay, people got love for DMX just because mm -hmm. they don't know him physically. You know, they they are fans of his and they love him. They love the uh uh the groundwork that he put in because they can identify with him. Whether they got aunts, uncles, and cousins and stuff that was on drugs before. But we're not going to stay on the drug part. Why we look so much at the negative when it mm -hmm. comes to us. Opposed <clears throat> to beauty and the things that he's done as far as with his journey in life. Right. Right. A lot of people don't get this right. But I'm going to ask you because we're going to deal with the DMX first as a part one. Clip it. You know. So you can have this documented on your channel as well. Where you're going in on DMX. So... Where were you when you heard your first DMX track? Do you remember? Yeah, I was locked down. When you heard the first DMX track, which yeah. one was that? Uh, uh, the first track ever from DMX? Yes. I heard a freestyle from DMX. Because, you know, uh, we were dealing with tapes back yes. then. So I used to get the freestyle tapes from I forgot which company. But I first heard DMX going off and I heard them barking. And I was like, what the hell is this dude barking like a dog? He was, and don't make me bite you. And I'm like, feeling that. I'm like, yo, homie is grunty, <laughs> grimy. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. It was different. You know what I'm saying? He put you in a different mode. A lot of people don't know that DMX is also a, a battle rapper. He's people a, don't he know. He comes out of battle. battle. Listen, let me tell you something. My cousin Steve Mack is... One of the first. He's part of that whole building with the dynasty and the rock, that whole pioneering. Mm -hmm. My cousin Steve Mack is the one who put that whole thing out there, that battle with Jay-Z and DMX. Yeah. My cousin Steve Mack is the force behind that. That would that, that would never happen if it wasn't for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's the one that was behind it. But as far as with uh, DMX, he never even told me about DMX or nothing. But when me and him did start to speak, he started telling me, like, nah, DMX is a battle rapper. That's what he do. That's his thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. Okay. And then my other people, my man John John told me about DMX. But this is before DMX came out. So, you know, I never paid attention to the name, none of that. I remember DMX from Just Ice. You remember Just Ice? Of course. Hell so yeah. you remember the Rebel uh, DMX? You remember the dude that was with him? His name was DMX too. No, I didn't know I said, that. Yeah, you don't even know. Yeah, I never you know? heard that one. His name was DMX too, but he wasn't no rapper. He wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? So I first heard about DMX without the name. He just told me, my cousin John John was telling me he was battling this dude that Mace took him to the uh, Feel So Good video. And he was supposed to battle X because X was battling with some dude from Queens. Mm -hmm. And he was killing him. So John was like, yo. Yeah, he all right. And X was like, what? You want some too? Huh? And he and that's how he was telling me, like, some dude with a crazy, grimy voice and this and that. I'm like, what? And then kissing him was like, yo, because X was like, yo, nah, nah, I'm done. I'm good. And Kiss was and Kiss and Jada was like, nah, give me some more. Keep it going. Give me some more. Because Mace brought him there, brought John John there, Trooper J. That mm -hmm. was his name. He brought Trooper J there to battle Kiss of one of them. Because he was Mace was telling him about the locks. He was like, yo, it was this group called the Locks. These dudes from Yonkers, them dudes is hot. And, you know, being that John Trooper J was from Harlem, he was like, what, Yonkers? Like, them niggas ain't nobody. They, they ain't even on the map. But when he heard them, he was like, yeah, them dudes is fire. But he first told me about that with DMX. And then when I heard him, I was like, man, who's this barking dude? And then I put two and two together. So, oh, that's the dude Trooper J was telling me about. Talk to us about um, Rough Riders. 
How did that begin? You know anything about that? How did yeah. that start? It? I know how the whole Rough Riders and everything started, Talk but I can't even speak about it. Why not? Because Steve Mack, he got me on the, or like, yo, now nah, you can't talk about it because he got something in the workings, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. I can't speak about the whole Rough right. Riders, the Dynasty, Jay-Z, and all of them, you know what I'm saying? Okay, that's But y'all going to see it. It's going to be out. You're going to see it, and uh, you're going to love it. How do you feel about Jay-Z knowing when you see DMX say, yo, this nigga was on some bullshit, that's why he didn't put my album out? Um, he saw me, um, DMX said he saw me as competition, yeah. so he didn't want to put my album out right away. How do you feel about the move, the sucker shit that Jay-Z did, man? I mean, I, I to me, that's, that's, that's some sucker shit. And I, I mean, like Jay-Z, I like Jigga, don't get me wrong. But to do that to your brother, man, like, come on, man. I mean, who want anybody to outshine the master? You don't want them to outshine the master. The master wants you to outshine them. So... They did say Jay-Z always been an arrogant type of dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then I look at it like the same thing with the YouTube. Come yeah. on, Si. This is the same thing. This is the new rap game now. You know, everybody eating off here. All the rappers is coming to YouTube. What type of sucker stuff you see that goes on here where you want to put somebody on or somebody trying to get on and everybody want to cock block everybody. They really, because they know this person is hotter than them or they might blow up more than them. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing with the YouTube industry. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What do you think DMX did for hip hop that no other artist has done? I believe that DMX has set a mark in hip hop just like Tupac did. But they, they're on the same level, but I think they just went two different directions as far as with their lyrics. and Because DMX touched you in a way, right? Mm -hmm. With the grimy, rugged, but he could be spitting a love song to you with the griminess. Tupac, when he's speaking, he get into your spirit. He get into your soul. So they was together as far as when DMX want to get into your spirit, he going to give you a prayer. Mm -hmm. When he want to give you a love song, he going to give you the grindiness, but he going to give you a good love song. He could spit a love song to you. When he want to give you that gangster shit, he going to give you that gangster, gangster shit. Joint. So I think that uh, uh, DMX has left a mark on hip hop that nobody will ever be able to do to where he had his own identity. He barked like a dog. You know, he wore the chain. You didn't see him with like jewelry and all that. He wore a dog chain. You know what I'm saying? And I guess that when he was coming up, that was his only friend. You know, mm -hmm. Boomer. He spoke about a Boomer. That was his only friend. So he began to live in that dog world. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just me and you. You know what I'm saying? It's just me and my dogs. Mm -hmm. And when people think about it, they think he's speaking about a person. This is for my dog. Man, he's speaking about his dogs, man. He loved his dogs more than anybody, man. Yes. Um... Has DMX devotion to the Most High and his faith affected you or even motivated you to seek a higher power? Being that you're already a spiritual person, mm -hmm. you, you deal with Islam. Has he made you come a little closer to your God or towards your faith? Because whenever you see DMX, he'll talk gritty. But when you get to meet DMX, he's more closer to his God and Savior. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was a spiritual brother. Yeah. So has his spirituality affected you in some way where it made you become closer to your God or to your Hell faith? Hell yeah. Not that it made me come closer, but just the moments in his prayers and it's, it, it, it touches your spirit. It touches your soul. And that's what religion is really about. It's about touching your spirit and touching your soul. So I believe that he has touched many people with his gospel and the word that he spread, you know, and his voice and everything, because voice and everything plays a part of it. His emotions and how he get into it, that plays a part of it. So I believe that DMX definitely was in connection with God and with his spiritual side. You, We knew DMX, but when he became Earl Simmons, that was a whole different side, you know. Mm -hmm. I believe that when he preached, he preached as Earl Simmons. He wasn't preaching as DMX. DMX is that gritty dude. Right. He that street. He's the dog. Wow. That's the dog. Earl is the one, the family man. He's the That's one. You've seen, him, you've, seen, you've seen him with his daughter. You've seen him with the family. Like, he was family man. Right. Man. Yeah, he put on a different face with the family. The original face. Um, there's so many um, things coming out right now. Like, yesterday we learned at his funeral that somebody's, I don't know if it's true, because I never heard nobody else say it, that he had corona. Um, yeah. He had the COVID. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's true. And then we heard from his best friend, that he took the shot Friday and he had a heart attack that Friday night. When you heard the news of DMX having a heart attack, where were you? 
And what have I you mean, started thinking about? Because, you know, everybody like, oh, shit, it's the drugs. He had a heart attack on drugs. Where were you and what was you thinking about? I was home when I heard about the news. <clears throat> and when you speak about heart attack, first thing when I seen DMX when he came home this last time, he was way overweight. He had the gut, you know, he had the fatter face. You usually see a DMX shirt off. You know, he got the little six-pack stomach, got the little abs there. And I said, damn, this is going to play a part on his health. So when I first heard the news, um, I thought about his health first. I wasn't even thinking drugs or nothing. I was thinking about, you know, what is he eating, uh, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, everything that weight uh, contributes to. So when I first heard the news, uh, you know, people talking about he had a heart attack because he was uh, uh, he overdosed on drugs, this and that. Not for a second did I believe that. Not for a second. And, I, and I'm still not going to believe that. I doubt that. I doubt that that's what caused his demise. Mm -hmm. And as far as with the COVID, I haven't never heard that he had COVID. I heard that they say he just got a shot in which you had interviewed his best friend. I can go with that, yeah, because that's playing a part. And what you see in the society, a lot of people are succumbing to death uh, and illnesses from getting the shot. Mm -hmm. um, which hip-hop artist had the most positive impact on you, Biggie, Tupac, or DMS? I can't even separate the three. I got to put them all together. They all had the same effect, man. They all had the same effect on me. I can't put Pac over Biggie, Biggie over Pac, DMX over, nah. Was you locked down when Pac and Biggie got hit? Yeah. Oh, okay. You was locked down. If you could speak to X right now, look into the camera and say what you want to say to him and to his family. I would say to DMX, as I say to everybody, yo, brother, you got to get your health together. We got to get back in that gym. You got to get up on that treadmill. And you got to let me work you out. That would have been my main thing if I would have seen X today or yesterday or any time. I would have been like, yo. Man, you done packed on a lot of weight, man. Let's get up in that gym, man. Let's get that health together. I'm not touching on what he's doing as far as personal with his drugs because everybody's on that. Everybody's on his shoulder about that. You know, you cause him more stress. You make a person want to get high, going crazy all on my neck about what I'm doing with my life and the choices that I'm making. But when it comes to your health and your overweightness, we got to get you back to, you know, the original health in, in the... That would have been what I would have said, man. That's, that that would have been my thing to ask. Okay, to okay, to that's what's up, man. Talk to us about Black Rob. I knew that you knew this brother personally. Mm -hmm. Give us something on Black Rob, brother. Talk to us about that. What was his life like? Well, not in his stages. not in his fallen stages, but I'm talking about when he was up there first. Well, when Rob was up on top, I was locked up. When Rob first came out, when he signed with Bad Boy and all that, I just knew he was a Harlem light. I was feeling it. He came out with good music. I was supportive of him. When I came home, you know, uh, matter of fact, when I first met Rob, we was at the uh, we was at the Apollo. Me and him, my man Jay Black, Woody, we was up in the Apollo. You know, he performed, and then after, you know, I got the video. We leaving and shit, and uh, uh, Black in the car. He like, yo, I can smoke in here. I'm like, nah, you can't smoke in here. So he get in the mm -hmm. car. He lighting a cigarette, and he putting it under the seat, and I'm seeing smoke, and I'm looking in the mirror. I'm like, what the fuck? It's smoking in the back of my car. What the hell going on? And I'm thinking it's coming from the car. But it's Rob in there. He got the cigarette hiding it. I'm like, yo, what you doing, man? He like, oh, my bad. You know how Rob talk. He talk with that smooth dude. My bad. Forward up, man. I'm sorry. Yo, put that cigarette out. He opens the door while I'm driving. I'm like, hold on. Close the door, Rob. What are you doing? <laughs> like, yo, you bugging. From that day forward, me and Rob was cool. We clicked from then, you know? And that's when Rob was, like, at his 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 uh, down point. He didn't have nothing. Puffy wasn't doing nothing for him. Nobody was doing nothing for him. And uh, not saying that anybody should do anything for him, that he should have been taking care of his own responsibilities as far as uh, finances and everything. But there comes a time when you see a person that's down, down, and you roll with them. This is your man, your road dog. You put him on his feet. When you see a person at they bottom, knowing Puffy, in which he knew yeah, that he Rob made thousands was for Puffy, millions, mm. which he knew what Rob was going through, and Puffy made it a personal thing. I can only tell you what Rob told me mm -hmm. when he told me that night when that situation went down with Sean and Puff, and with the shooting and all that, mm -hmm. and with the dude through the money and Puff face and all that. He came to Rob first, the guy. They asked him, yo, where your man at, yo? And he go, you know how dudes come to you like, yo, man, I don't like your man, your man, this and that, that and this. 
and Rob. So why are you telling me that, man? He over there. Go say that to him. And he was talking about Puffy. And then that's when he went over, and that's when the situation went down. And Puffy took it as, yo, you sent the dude at me like you did some sucker shit. You're supposed to be my man. But Rob was like, I wasn't doing it in that way. I was just saying, like, don't say that to me. You got beef with him. Talk to him. And Puffy shut him down behind that. Puffy was calling him a rat and all kind of stuff. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And Rob was like, yo, I don't know why he coming at me like that when I apologized. I did everything I could. You know what I'm saying? Then even Rob told me about, he showed me his phone. Like, look, I got Jay-Z number right here, man. I could call Jiggin. I'm like, yo, call him. Tell him. Like, man. But Rob pride was like, nah, man, I can't do it, bro. I'm not, I'm not going to do that, man. You know what I'm saying? He had a lot of pride. I was like, well, you got more than me. Because if I messed up my kidney, I'm about to die. I'm calling. You know what I'm saying? But I guess he expected people to come at him and look out for him. You know what I'm saying? But it's many times when I went and got robbed, I done gave him clothes, gave him jacket, gave him all kinds of shit. You know what I'm saying? Because he was messed up. And it was a, and, and, and it's sincere coming from me because you ain't nobody, you ain't got money. I got that's crazy where I got more money than you now. When you was on top, you was that dude. Why are you broke? And I went to different homies of mine, like, yo, try to get Rob back in the studio, try to get him going, get him on tour again, even do his same songs over. But he just didn't have that spirit no more. He didn't have it because he was sick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So So you're saying somebody threw money in P. Diddy's face? Yeah, at the at the uh, the situation with him and Sean, that the dude threw the money in P. Diddy's face. Like, how much money? Like, right. I don't know how much money. What? Could it be $5 or $1,000? I don't know. Oh. But it was counting in the air? I don't know, Sai, you know how much money. I don't he know. He threw it in his face? Yeah. Why? Because I think P. Diddy was uh, buying out the bar or something, buying everybody's shit, and the dude had his own bread or something. I don't know. That's the story I got from that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Black Rob, Rob was an official dude. He was sincere in his plight. As far as uh, how he was when he was in the industry on top, I don't know. I just know him from when he was in a situation when he got sick and I was dead and I seen it. I seen him at the hospital. I seen when he was going to get his uh, treatments and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So nobody could ever say like, yo, he was a drug addict. He was this, he was that. Nah, he wasn't that. Rob was Rob. He was a fisherman. And, and mm -hmm. it's sad that they put up those pictures as far as, um, I forgot the DJ name. He put the picture of Rob when he in the hospital when we had his weakest point. That's us black people. Why would we do that to each other? You put up that picture, then you put up the other one when he's in a hotel and he's weak and he's tired. Opposed to, where were you at when he was, you know what I'm saying? Like this before. Where were you at two years ago? Three years ago? Where were you? You wasn't even there. Where were y'all at? They wait till somebody to die and now they start, you know, bashing them. Or, or, or talk about, yeah, we was trying to help. Nobody was trying to help him at all. It's a fact. I was dead. The streets who know, knew. When I came through and I went to different spots, I had Rob with me. Mm. Okay, brother. <clears throat> so, um, we're going to get off Rob. We're going to switch gears. We're going to switch gears. 